<laughs> Welcome to Trusty Hogs, the podcast. This is a podcast where Helen and I discuss our drama, your drama, and the problems you wish us to solve. And Corny Kardashian's engagement. Oh my God, that ring, that ring. And Helen insists it's on doing, doing a pig noise, which everyone has loved. Annoyingly, the, the audience reception to the pig noises has actually been quite good, even though I hate them. And we're also going to have a guest because it's episode six and we have the incredible Chloe Petz coming to talk to us. Woo, woo, I love Chloe. Excited. I love Chloe. Through the fog, step forth the trust. Maybe they won't, and that's your problem. They'll have guests and Andrew White on the tech. Oh, it's Helen and Catherine as the trusty hogs. Trust the trusty hogs, or maybe not. Let's unpack what we just started to talk about. There's two things. One, Andrew's ghosting situation. No, two, number one, Andrew is enough. Okay, and two, we need to discuss your court summons, which I feel like two I court summons. did warn you against. So let's begin there because, Andrew, I won't be able to relax enough to engage with you until I deal with this. Helen, what did I say to you? Just pay council tax on, uh, sort it out when Sunil moves in immediately. Great. Yeah. What did you think was the case with council tax? Um, I thought, I thought that's how you did it. I did. You thought what was how you did it? You pay it. Yeah. Monthly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I believe in paying taxes. I'm a big fan of it. Always yeah. done it. Yeah. But I have never, I've always lived in houses where someone else is in charge of it. That makes sense. So then with Sunil moving in, I was like, obviously we'll split the bills. Yeah. So I did the ones that are easier to do when we could take over from Emma leaving. Sure. So I took over water. I did internet. I did Disney Plus. Sure, the big three, yeah. The big three. And no one's sort of the council tax. So Sunil was gas and electric uh -huh. and council tax. Mm -hmm. And he said... And that would you say that those are as important as Disney Plus? I don't know what you want me to say because I feel like you're hinting at something, but I haven't picked up on it yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, like, it's not... I'm just saying Frozen won't actually keep you warm. Okay, you'd be surprised at how watching Elsa build an ice palace makes you feel really cozy with a blankie on the couchy. But that's fine. So we have now been caught summoned twice, but Sunil rang them up and now we're paying it monthly. So that's all you have to do. And we just got an extra charge because of the summons. I'm sorry. So you think it's a win because you got two court summons, an extra charge? It's like £50. All right. Bloody Daddy Warble. Yeah, but well, no, but like we've got a um executive producer on this now, right? So <laughs> yeah, but then you... that will just go straight for me paying my legal fees. You know that that's split... so. Please sign up for our Patreon for my legal fees. <laughs> you realise that's split three ways, right? Two ways. Oh no, three ways. Yeah. I thought you meant our council tax, and I was like, I've got an extra flatmate that's I was paying. Like, Helen cut Andrew out of the money so fast. She's like, you are enough. So quickly, you yeah. are enough, but you can have none of the profit of this. I said profit. We aren't making profit yet, but we. <laughs> Could be if you sign up for our Patreon. <laughs> but we, we're paying it now monthly, which is really exciting. And now we've just got to figure out gas and electric. You still haven't sorted gas and electric. What, why no, we... but it's not me. I feel like, right. So I, right. Uh... As a woman, I feel like I am expected to take control of household utilities. So I am waiting and I have, de I have delegated. I have no problem with you not doing the bills. And I don't know if you need to take a feminist stance on it. My point is simply this. You should at least hound the other person till it's done. I did. I put it on his um, whiteboard, gas and electric, under get jacked and um, <laughs> just above a uh, lift wet towel with dick for gains. What? Yeah. Because <laughs> we're, we're getting fit in our house and we're trying to think of like fitness goals. And he thinks if he could lift a wet towel with his dick, then that would mean that he's like muscly. So gas wow. electrics just above that. Wow. Yeah. Just, just above. Just yeah? above. Just, just above. Lift How are you going to get the it? towel wet if the shower is not working? Um, <laughs> <laughs> our friend Will also came over and wrote on Sunil's whiteboard, um, get into philanthropy for real this time, <laughs> which I love. <laughs> okay, no, but seriously, how are you going to wet the towel if the shower doesn't work? The, the shower does work. For now. Because I pay the water bill. Oh, yeah, fucking no, cool. No, no, I don't think you understand, <laughs> Helen. Do you have an electric shower? It, uh, you, um, how would I know that? <laughs> Do you have to heat up a boiler before you, to get hot water, or does your shower always give you hot water? Just, just hot water. You have whenever. an electric shower, with an you. electric shower, yeah. Right, so you don't just need water for that, you also need 
Electricity. Yeah. Yeah. So you're gonna need the what for the shower to work? But we've got it. We just haven't paid for it. And and when you stop paying for it for long enough, what happens? They cut you off, and then we pay it. Oh my god, I'm so stressed. How I'm is this not? I don't understand the drama here. And when you don't have lights, you will. No, Andrew. <laughs> no, because that's why I've got so many fucking candles. Oh my god. <laughs> you walk into a flat and it's like we've got no electricity, but it smells so strongly of Yankee that it's like, it's kind of worth it, isn't it? Also, it's kind of like cool to live in like candlelight. When we were younger, yeah. we would do that every now and again, like have a dinner by candlelight. How'd you cook it? Have, well, just it would be like a pizza. That you ordered in. So in the oven, no. Oh, so no, just so the, like a the pizza oven. The oven was working. Yes. Okay, so you chose to use the candle. Yeah. Didn't have we to. weren't, yeah, yeah. It was like a. Yeah, so my question is how are you going to cook the pizza in your scenario? Um, lighters. <laughs> <laughs> then I will use you know all what? our lighters that we you use for our food. You don't want to be helped. And hold them I under can't. a frozen pizza. I can't spend any more Until it's all bubbly honest. cheese on top. And then we'll have a romantic dinner by candlelight. You're ridiculous. It'd okay. be fucking sick! Would it, though? <laughs> Andrew said the... Uh, believe it or not, Helen's saga is not the saddest thing I've heard today. Andrew, before the podcast started, I don't know if you caught it, was like, Hey, great news, guys! The two men who ghosted me have unghosted me! And even Helen knew that was wrong. I'm happy for you if you feel like it's a win, but I don't think that they... They that's not their a chance is gone now with you. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not like welcoming them, them back with open arms. I'm just saying, like, for them to go through the rigmarole of unghosting me and like having that awkward conversation, it was like, oh, they, that's, they've wanted me that much, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that nice like boost of like, okay, I'm still on their mind. Hang on exactly. a second. When you say exactly. they had to have that conversation, did both of them come back to you and say, "Hello, Andrew, I would like to deeply apologize for treating you like you are a person not worthy of." disconnecting with appropriately and with respect and also I would like to ask permission to enter your life again and also would you like to engage in a romantic relationship because I've been thinking about you non-stop was that exactly what they said both of them uh so the second guy was like sorry I ghosted you uh are you down to fuck later and I didn't Cute. I said no I Soz said no. DTF question mark <laughs> basically oh my god how beautiful I love confidence in a man I do love confidence it's stunning sorry just, let me just wipe a tear from my eye Andrew Ooh. <laughs> God, how will the other guy ever compete? And the first one said? <laughs> the first one said. I'm sorry, because he, he, he's not like properly kind of... I mean, he's out to his family, he says. But anyway, he said it was the first time he'd been with a guy and he thought I'd given him an STI. So he got scared and angry at me and ignored me. But he got tested. He's not got an STI. I am clean. So uh, he, Why did he, he think he had one? I'm it's, sorry. I don't know. The other one said, Saws, thought you dirty, man. <laughs> <laughs> Turns yeah. out you didn't infect me like I previously thought, so I've let go of the rage I un like warrantedly had against you. And yeah. I think it's Romantic, kind of fun, right? and also because it's like it's like you know autumn vibes. It's ghost season, like it's kind of like <laughs> yeah. Halloweeny. First of all, it's twenty twenty one. If somebody, if you have an SDI, the idea of like being like I'm not speaking to this other person, as opposed to like. Quite, you know, talking about it like a normal person that you have had. Oh, with. like you would take it well if I gave you lice. If I gave you pubic lice. I would talk to you about it. I'd explain actually? to you that you have it. I would go get it sorted. And <laughs> would then... you get a nick comb and take it to my pubes? No, I think that you should probably go get rid of those. But also, my, my point, but also we wouldn't have fucked. Come on, be realistic. And also, do you have? Fun? No, no. Okay. But I, I would and like, do you remember nits when you were younger and how fun they were? No, I no. never like, had them. Oh, you never had nits? No. How? Is it not a thing in Ireland? A thing in Ireland. It is a thing if you mean that. Do yeah, we but have every them? kid gets them. No, not every kid does. Okay, every kid in my town got them like five times. That's astonishing. Or maybe bad. in our household we got them a lot because we were all like running up to people going like, hi, 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 hi. Okay, like, well, that is, our hair together I, no, on the plane. Helen, we have, to, we have to circle back to Andrew, <laughs> but I do want to say that's disgusting. Okay, um, Andrew, They're sorry. amazing. You can see them crawling around can we talk this about the fact horrible. that Andrew got two messages this week one was Saz I thought you gave me an STI but anyway you didn't I'm back but and the other was Saz DTF and he thinks that's a win well not like oh you know it's not a loss that's yes beautiful. it is Andrew it's two <laughs> losses you are enough but you take your wins where you get them and I respect it no you, you. are the enough the STI guy was really apologetic and like quite you know he said it's like I, I felt really bad and like, I did, did miss you during that time it's nice so. when someone he should feels feel like they owe you mm. like a right in of the wrong because they could have just left it yes mm. and it's always nice to get a DTF message 
You no, know, no, 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 no. First of all, the I'm going to send you one later. The second guy <laughs> doesn't you. think you're worthy of communication, but is willing when desperate to have sex with you. Go fuck yourself. The first guy, thank you for your apology. I accept it. It's nice to understand what happened. I wish you well. Okay. Andrew. Yes. Those are you th- think about whatever you want to think about it. Okay. You ignore this. I'm She's ca- just jealous because no Catherine one's. Catherine is objectively right. I, I won't necessarily action that, but I know you are right, Catherine. Are you going to have sex with both these men? Not the second one, definitely not. Are you going to have sex with the STI guy? He was very cute. Very yeah, cute. He was. Very <laughs> cute. Communicator and full of misplaced rage. I know, but non communication can sometimes be a turn on because it's like they're mysterious, like what's going on, like any sort of illusion, stuff like that. I'm like, oh my God, let's talk about it, you know? But he won't talk about it. He will when you got him there. What, what do you mean there? In between your legs. <laughs> there that's what Helen calls her vagina there is that not there is that not the there that we all refer to have I got it wrong oh good okay. lord head lice Andrew you got them right uh, I think once just once I can't believe you never had them I feel like you should get them now to have the experience Absolute of them absolutely not I do not want them Ew, it's, you just gross. have to comb through your hair but my mum got no, an electric my- knit comb that um, made like a beep sound when it got one and then she'd like get it onto a toilet Whoa. roll but I always oh wanted to God. see it like I wanted to because I felt they felt very like mine you know like they lived with me so then I would want to see them and you could like see them on the pad and then she squeezed them too oh, oh my God <laughs> if she squeezed them too Please hard stop. This is repulsive. then like little bits of blood oh. would come out oh. then oh. and they oh. die oh. my little nips it was awful and I remember my sister had them once and they Make were so stop, many Helen. that we had to, we were going up to London or something to see a family member and and um, I could like pull them no, I'm out of her head ears. just with my own little fingers, like a little monkey. Ooh. It was amazing. Helen, I'm muting your mic. No! That was disgusting. Oh I actually hate it. There should so be more much. awareness for head lice. I think people are aware. It's just that people weren't like fucking. But now my head's itchy because I'm talking about it. Do you know oh what my I God, mean? Please make it stop. Make like, it stop. Let's move on. It. Let's move on. Let's move on. That's disgusting. <laughs> if you're still with us at this point in the episode, I truly appreciate your loyalty and commitment, and I'm sorry about Helen. Let's Is my talk. mic unmuted now? Uh, it, yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Helen. Would you like me to say... I'm going to say something as offensive as everything you just said, except from in my language. Offensive? Yeah. Okay, hold that, my hand and speak your an truth. I'm myself, but here's what I'm going to say to you. This week is the beginning of November, and I'm so excited to be starting November having finished my Christmas shopping. Andrew? Yeah. You might want to meet my mic I'm again. I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> I'm about to fucking lose it. Did you actually? Yeah. Did you get me a gift? I know you say you I do, did. but I always think like, I how much of gift. this is Catherine sort of like doing a bit, you know? I finished my Christmas shopping. I got you a gift. I got Andrew a gift. I feel really good about it. <gasps> what I'm, is it? I'm not telling you. Tell me what you got, Andrew. Andrew, come your ears. I won't tell you. I won't tell you. I will not. I won't. I'm not going to tell you. I'm actually, I feel particularly good about Mama your, Mia? no, oh. I don't, why would I pay money to things I don't support? <laughs> well, I don't want I, it then. <laughs> white people shouldn't saying I will not say it again um, I just think that I think you're going to love your gift and I'm excited but yeah I finished and I feel really light like go- and the thing is just so me- you know I'm going to buy you like a voucher last minute oh, no, okay. I figured it I'm, so, I'm actually shocked I'm getting anything um, but also you'll give it to me at Easter so is it really a Christmas gift the point it's, is this. it's all of Jesus's celebrations gift do you want to talk about um, our plan to buy Andrew a birthday present yeah it didn't go well yeah because Helen was like I was like Helen let's go in together and get something and she was like uh no let's make it a challenge let's no set, bullshit let's, set, okay, let's no. set a goal let's set a goal let's here's the money we'll spend and then we'll both go get something and see who gets the best thing I was like all right you're on so anyway I go get my gift in the budget that's discussed and then on the day that we're supposed to give it to Andrew I'm like hey Helen we, what did the, you the get, day Andrew? we were giving it to Andrew was today no 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 okay then I read it wrong okay but Andrew on my life I start by going like, it's super simple for Andrew's birthday. We need to take him to the West End to go see a show, the three of us. She refused. Because one, I was like, Helen, that's I'm not cost- joking. Andrew, I I'm, love you. But I was like, that's yeah. going to cost hundreds of pounds. And no, secondly, it's not. It's not for like long running shows. Secondly, I was like, hey, it Helen, went- I hate musicals. Mm. So that would be terrible but for Andrew. It's not a gift for you. 
Yeah, but, but I would have I, to be there. I would also, I'd feel bad for, I wouldn't enjoy that experience because I know Catherine would be hating He's it. a Are good man. Serious? He's a good man. Yeah. He's a good I man. like people struggling to enjoy something because I, I feel like when people say they don't yes, like musicals, Helen, they just haven't birthday, been. Day, you made all your friends meet you in a park, brought the cake that I had bought for you, put it out and said, nobody eat this. It's for me. I want to take it home for the friend. I know, but you've got to bring something for the table. <laughs> my, <laughs> my point is, you're not about other people's enjoyment, whereas Andrew's a kind of man. Anyway, we set the budget. We both went and spent the budget, I thought. And then I was like, hey, Helen. Uh, and I knew, I just knew you wouldn't have got him something. So I texted you on the day and was like, what to get Andrew? Or would you like to go in on mine? And you were like, and this was the audacity of it. Helen, who did not have you a gift yet at this point, Andrew said, oh, mm, what did you get him? Like, as if she was going to check if it was all right before. I was like, bitch, I got him something. Do you want it? And she's like, yes, please, I will get it. So when I tell you... I was you, honestly still thinking of getting him tickets. What, what, where is this money? You need to sort out your gas and electric. Yeah, but you can go see, like, I don't know, fucking Women in Black for a tenner. What is that? The Are, best show of all time. It's that, like a kind of isn't like a It's a ghost film? show. Isn't it like a Hallmark movie? No. I bet you it is. There's a movie with Daniel Radcliffe in it. I bet you it is. Okay. Bet. Either way, it's fucking amazing. Anyway, it's really good. I finished my Christmas shopping and I feel light and good about it. Now, obviously in December, what I'll do is panic that I haven't got everyone enough stuff and spend more money. But until then, I'm going to wait and try to enjoy my life. Jesus Christ. You just got to chill it out. Like, it's not about I will about chill out gift. now. I have no It's about time to together. It's about singing songs around the piano. That's absolutely not true. I spent my Christmas It's about last watching year. Hitler documentaries with no. your family. <laughs> I spent... It's about really learning about World War II no. and your part in it. No, I spent <laughs> Christmas alone last year away from my family. And let me tell you, it turns out the gift gifts did help so it is about the gifts people it is um you what do you what do you ask for do you give a list we do a chris kindle in oh yeah of course family so um i i heavily hint Mm -hmm. and then i hope for the best see i hinted one year and i got the wrong thing and it was devastating i was 11 and i cried oh by heavily hint i mean i send links to the exact thing i want (laughs) sorry i should have said no but that's what i used to do when i was younger i would like write down the argos catalog page and the number of the thing like really specific but i wrote it down wrong once and i got the wrong thing and i was so devastated my mom was like this is what you asked for and i was like i spelt it (laughs) (laughs) That's so funny because the Argus catalog is so broad as well. Like I know, get like a fucking toaster. I got it totally wrong, and she's like, "You'll love it." Did you get like a printer? What did you get instead? No, but one year I did. Um, I was right. You know when you're like younger and you're like, "I've decided what I want to do with my life," and you make that decision overnight, and you're like, "This is it. This is me." I think I just watched Little Women, and I was like, "I am Joe." So I wanted. Do you think you're Joe? I wanted a typewriter, and they had one in the Fisher Price like toy section. On, on. I'm sorry. Argos the, catalog. What did you get instead? And I no, I got the typewriter. This is the year when it worked out. Oh, cute! I got the typewriter, but I no one told me about that you couldn't delete or go back. So I would like write like three letters, press something wrong, and be like, ah, oh! and I'd like rip the whole page out and start again. Which is why you are an. Amy, Beth. you're Amy, you're okay. Amy. Oh my God, you're Amy, you're obviously Amy. What are you talking about, Joe? What are you talking about, Joe? You, I've never met more of an Amy in my whole but life. But I'm a creative type. I'm yeah, she out paints. there. Yeah, that's Amy. No, I'm not Amy. Don't even fucking you try it. You are Amy. Don't even try it. I'm sorry. Okay, well Amy. then you're Meg. That's fine. Of course I'm Meg. Meg's the shit one. Of course I'm Meg and you're Amy. Oh my God. You're Laurie, by the way. That's no. a compliment. Andrew's Thank Beth. You. No, Andrew's aren't Mars. Andrew's Beth. He's so <laughs> nice. Yeah, actually, that works too. That works too. No, Beth is nice, but she's always like, it's all about her. Yeah, that's true. Guess who's sick again? Guess <laughs> no. who's got the scarlet fever? Which also makes you more of a Beth than it does Joe. Like, you are so... I can't believe you thought you were a Joe. I know, but I... That's absurd. I feel like you don't know me well enough to be able to make this call. Oh, really? Yeah, 100%. You? Wow. 100%. I have such strong Joe vibes. I write. I travel to the city. <laughs> I like German men. Mm-hmm. I um, watch other people getting pregnant. Mm-hmm. I said no to my neighbor and then he married my sister. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> I too had a manuscript burnt by a sibling that I then allowed to fall under the ice. No, let's be clear. <laughs> let's be clear. You, first of all, if Amy was drowning, 
you and I would have let her drown. Well, so I, we're not. Could you imagine me trying to get to her and not cracking more yeah, with the with, weight of me? No way. I, <laughs> and I, the guy coming out the eyes, just making the holes bigger around. And her. I'd have been like, finally. So <laughs> we are not. We are not, Joe. Second to that, you absolutely. If I, if your older sister wrote this phenomenal book and you yeah. wanted to pettily get back at her, you would absolutely throw it in the fire. I don't think I'd burn. I think I'd rip and hide where I was like hiding food wrappers and okay. disagree. So you're an Amy. <laughs> you're an Amy and it's absolutely outrageous that you thought you were a Joe. I'm really devastated that you're like, you're right. I understand your justification. I don't want to be Meg. I don't want to be Meg, but I am who I am. I know, but like, I just feel like, you know I'm on my period and I know you are as well. And you know I you fell over sleep. yesterday and I scraped my knee. Oh yeah, you did. Which was that. awful for me. So like you realise that all this attention seeking is such an Amy trait. It's also a Beth trait. <laughs> it's also by the but, way, just really quickly, for um you know the new little women fit not new, it's been out for ages now, but the Sasha Ronan one. Yeah. Um, I went to go see it on Boxing Day in Aldershot um, with like my mum and my brother and his then girlfriend. And um, there was another family from Fleet there that we know, um, my friend Ellie and her parents. And it was we watched the whole film. And like I know the book from the film really well. My mum does as well. Like Ellie yeah. does. And Ellie's mum came out of the cinema. We're all like standing outside on the street, just like chatting. And then she was like, "God, I could not follow that. I could not follow that. <laughs> I mean, how many times did she die? Three, four? <laughs> Because of the flashback <laughs> in the film, she kept thinking Beth was dying on repeat. What? She was fucking mad. And we were all like, we don't, I don't know. And Ellie was like, it's going to be a long car journey home. I was like, good luck with it. I couldn't I'm like. I'm sorry, just to clarify, in Fleet, are you a genius? I am one of the smarter ones of Fleet. <laughs> <laughs> I walked down the high street and there goes, there goes Mensa Helen. There she fucking goes. And I'm like, <laughs> Just like. That fucking level of just like not understanding wow. things. Wow. Insane, isn't it? Wow. I don't have the words for that. Well, listen. I Shout wouldn't... out to Rosemary Salter. <laughs> is Rosemary... That's her name, yeah. Oh, Rosemary. <laughs> Love on. Rosemary. She'll be like, is Helen an actual pig listening to this? <laughs> so um... Rosemary's one of those great mums where you're like, I fucking love you. I remember me and Ellie were, went to get our hair done in year 10 after school. And like I had highlights and a fringe put in, which I shouldn't have done. And Ellie got little pink bits put in. And then we went to go see her mum at work and she's a receptionist at like um like a retirement home and we walked in and she went oh my god you've ruined yourselves you've ruined yourselves girls oh this is awful and she got all the old women around to come and look at us and be like she used to be so beautiful look what she's <gasps> done and we were just standing there like we hate everything <laughs> oh my god <laughs> fucking awful rosemary sounds like a class a biatch um, rosemary's her. irish Oh, yeah. There that, we go. That's why she thinks you ruined yourself because <laughs> Jesus gave you the hair you have and why would you be troubling yourself? They ruined themselves. They yeah. ruined themselves. I love it. I hate when you do an Irish accent. <laughs> now... Hi, it's Catherine. I'm going on tour. The tickets are on sale. The show is called This Isn't For You. It's a comedy show. It is for you, though. Obviously, if you're listening to this podcast, I want you to come to my tour show. And I'm going all over the UK and Ireland. So yeah, you can get tickets at catherinebohart.com. And it's a comedy show. I'd love you to come. I think it's going to be quite good. I hope it's going to be quite good. Regardless, we'll have a nice time, won't we? Thank you to all of our Patreon supporters, but especially executive producers Simon Moores and Guy Goodman. And our producers, Kim Dobgal, Lee Myersko, David Walker, Tim and Dom, Kira Leach, Richard Bicknell, SB Dubs, L, Richard Bald, Sadie Cashmore, Neil Redmond, Claire Owen-Jones, Rachel R, Victoria Hutchison, Jess and Nick, Emma Walton, Karen Bull, Anthony Conway and Harold Van Dyke. If you'd like to support Trusty Hogs, Go to patreon.com forward slash trusty hogs and pledge today for exclusive bonus content, merchandise and so much more. Do you need me to do the jingle? Ready? Yes. Oh my God. Can you sing can a you jingle? Sing the jingle? I don't think I, I think I can probably just do the first two lines. Go on, do it. Through the fog. Yes. Here come the trusty hogs. Go- <laughs> there go it's again. Helen and Catherine. Mm-hmm. No, what is it? Andrew, I on the tech. <laughs> something, something. And this is why we didn't do they the They have guests. Walking and down Andrew the street with, with my, my dad. dad. <laughs> 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 Chloe Betts is here, everybody. Yay! Yay! We're so excited. 
do here? Do you want to hear the most hilarious thing Helen said earlier about but little I women? I don't remember what it is I said. Oh, God, she said yeah. about little women that she thinks she's a Joe. No. I, I know, I know that's bullshit. Because you said it in a way that made Chloe Sorry. feel. Helen thinks she's a Joe. Who do you think she is? I have a strong feeling. Uh, Hang on, I've got it. A Beth. <laughs> 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 that was my second choice. Like, I'm dying. Beth is harsh, but I think she's obviously an Amy. What? Just sort of innocuous? No, no she's not no, innocuous. No, because she's right, so attention-drawing and jealous of her older sisters. Beth is yeah. the yeah. attention-seeking one. Yeah, which no, is why she, Amy no, hates she's it. She's not attention-seeking. She's got like a life-threatening illness that she eventually dies yeah, she from. Gets she's twice. actually very stoic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, um... Helen's I don't. Amy. Why do you think you're a Joe? Because I'm creative and I'm outgoing. I don't. I'm Amy's not defending creative. myself. Just anymore. because, like, you hang around near lesbians a lot, it doesn't make you one. <laughs> Joe's not a lesbian. Come on. Okay, sure. Well, then why did she end up with the professor? Uh, uh, it's a Taylor's. Women time. didn't have choices then. She chose to be with him. He was obviously gay too. What? They were each other's beards. They ran a school. No, no, you're not right. I've read all four Little Women books. Yeah, there's... me too. Okay. There's no way she would run an all-boys school and marry the professor if she didn't want to. She was too headstrong from the beginning. Yeah, she did want to because it's a perfect cover for her. Lesbianism. Sometimes what people just like teaching as well, regardless yeah. of sexuality. Yeah, I agree. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, this isn't right. Fine, fuck it. You guys have a nice chat. I'm going to go sit with Andrew. No, come in back. Tech, come back. I feel... No, this is what happens all the time, is that you do something wrong and bad, and then you make us work to fix it. <laughs> what did I do wrong and bad? A classic gamey fucking... move. A classic gamey your, move. You put your face onto my... Clean. You said you had a cold, so I headbutted you in greeting instead. No, you rubbed your face against it and you got makeup, makeup. all over it. All yeah. over your shirt. And then I showed some justifiable upset by it and then I had to comfort you. Yeah, that's exactly what happened to be fair. Well, you've called Helen on her bullshit so fast. Listen. That's crazy. I've not seen that done. And now Helen doesn't know what to do. Well, My she's doing it again. Francis I'm going to have to comfort the podcast her for this. And she thinks I get bullied on it. Who does? My friend Francis. Does she really think that? Yeah. Get what, what did she say? What did, what did Francis say? No, Helen, come on. I'm getting her on the phone. Wow. I don't, because, so Chloe Petz has called you on putting your makeup all over their shirt and consequently you're calling your friend because you think you're a bully. Yeah. <laughs> and you think that disproves Chloe's theory that we yeah. have had to comfort you despite your bad behavior. Yeah. Okay, it's a stance. If she doesn't answer, this is going to be fucking devastating for me. I don't think she will answer. You can say what she said and we'll take it on good faith. Yeah. Promise? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. She says that I get talked down to and I'm actually a really strong, independent woman and I don't need it. No, that's what... You don't need the podcast. <laughs> I don't need... No, I need the podcast. That's, <laughs> that's one of those speeches that you give to your friend that you're worried about. I know, it is, isn't it? <laughs> um, I actually patronise you because you're a strong, independent woman. I wouldn't if you weren't. I'm a Joe. I'm a Joe, you're a Meg, and you're a fucking Laurie. Are you all happy now? I'll take that. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. You, you've done really well out of that situation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How about this? You're John Brooks. <gasps> Which one's John Brooks? <gasps> Meg's husband. The worst. The literal worst. He's a tutor, and then he gets married, and that's his whole personality. Yeah, it's crazy how he's just happy because he loves his wife. It's so stupid. What a loser. But that's also quite cool because like he's had the narrative of what the women usually get in books of that era. You're right, yeah. actually. That's a whole different yeah. world. Except he, he gets, is a strong independent except woman. Except he gets to have agency because they choose their life as it is because uh, they love each other and they actually want children. He dies. What? Everybody when? dies. He dies. I mean, they're all dead Second by now. Book. so They all die. Yeah. They're all uh, dead now. All little, of them. Little wives. They're all dead. Mm. Is there like a big... I haven't read that one. Is I've only read Little Women and then is it Little Men? Good Wives. Oh, and good, then good wives. Little Men and Joe's Boys. Yeah. No, no. I, I can't remember any of them. How do they all die? Is it like... um? They don't all die during the book. No, but they, they definitely all die is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm taking a nihilistic approach. Okay. I was hoping it was going to be like, you know, at the end of Biker Grove when they all realised that they were in a um TV show. Louisa May Alcott like writes what? into... <laughs> What? Right. Wait, wait. Is that the wait, end, of Biker, the end of Biker Grove? Yeah. Also, how did you make it to the end of Biker Grove? I completed Biker Grove, mate. What? 
Yeah, they Page like... 25. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, yeah, someone I just did a rewatch last <laughs> lockdown one. <laughs> you know what? Helen finished all of the Little Women books and you finished all of Biker Grove. Maybe Helen is a more together person than we give her credit for. I'm a Mensa member, bitch. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fucking Mensa member, hun. Chloe yeah. Pence, um, we did Gigless Live the other night. Oh, yeah. Um, and we did some new material and Helen defended Andrew Lloyd Webber having had his good name dragged through the mud by homosexual Andrew. Um, and Andrew made a mistake in that context because he was referring to a time that Westlife covered a song. Whistle Down the Wind. Yes. Yeah. When it was in fact Boyzone, a mistake Aww. that no Irish person would ever make in their lives. Whistle Down the I don't wind. care about musicals, but apparently Can I say what do. my defence was? Yeah. I mm. just said... Should, should I say what my position was? Yeah, first I feel when... like Catherine's basically. We have to cut all of this from the edit. Nobody wants to hear us figuring out how to have this conversation. Can I but... also just say that um, I secretly tried to like pick my nose a tiny bit when you two weren't looking, and then I was like, "Oh fuck, there's a camera." Right there. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get it? No, it, it was just it was more sort of one of those like just in case ones. Andrew, you, you don't yeah, have anything thanks. there. Send me that cut. <laughs> also, did you ever have um, headlights when you were a kid? Yeah, thank yeah. you. A couple of times. Me too. Oh my god! What? It's not. They no, I know, it. but I've never had it. And I wouldn't have had it multiple times. That seems, like, careless. Okay. Bitchy. Um, Andrew, what is Life's your position <laughs> on Andrew Lloyd Webber? And then I will say mine, and then Chloe can jump in. I just don't have a lot of respect for the man. I thought... Uh, I Whoa, thought... Savage, you went in hard. Stop than stirring I... up the shit, okay? <laughs> wow. Sit back and take it on like a fucking beer man. Wow. Is that one of his songs? Zion <laughs> man. Don't do this when Andrew ha is speaking because he needs to keep an eye on levels and speak. Oh, yeah, sorry. Just moderate you, your... Okay. okay, Andrew, you don't like you don't like Andrew Lloyd Scott Webber Le Lloyd man Andrew Andrew Lisa Scott Lee yeah, Webber. Yeah, which one do you not like? <laughs> <laughs> I just I thought I I quite like Superstar Phantoms okay and I don't rate anything else really. And Elaine Page plays him too much on Elaine Page. But like, why have we gone in for the quality of his work and not the quality of the content of his character? Oh yeah, he's an awful man as well. That is another. Is he? Aspect. Why? Yeah, yeah. He. Is right. He is an awful allegedly. man. Allegedly, I said why? no. No, no, no. This it's not allegedly. What? You... Why? He's like voted against a lot of things that are very significant to the arts that leverage him keeping a lot of money and wealth and not very supportive of he, artists. He's like he's a, a peer or something. Like mm. yeah, lord. And he flew back from like America to vote on this thing to vote against like uh, of four benefit cuts or something like that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Maybe you should put it in the um the show notes. Um, no. I, <laughs> so I said, what I will say for Andrew Lloyd Webber is he brought us the searching for the new Dorothy, the new Maria, the new Nancy shows, which I loved because I did respect the Dorothy show that every weekend ended with one of the teenage girls taking off their shoes they'd been dancing in for a full week, handing them to him, and he would just sit there on a throne holding their shoes on a cushion like, I fucking love feet. And then they'd wave off in a moon, and I thought that was just the best TV choice. So I love it for that reason. Maybe um, Also, I think Phantom's fucking flawless. Maybe if we did like a retrospective of all his musical, it would be like Tarantino, and there's actually loads of foot stuff in it. That <laughs> is! Oh, that wow. is! He's clearly a foot guy. Okay, no I, one who likes I don't know dance. him, but I have met him. Um, what the hell? This is new information. At Jimmy Carr's Christmas party, I met him. At who? Jimmy Carr's? Jimmy Carr's right. Christmas party. He was there. You remember, we were there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, serving the food. Uh, <laughs> Eating. Um, it's a lovely do. And, uh, and uh, he was there and he stood... No. My ex stood on his toes. So it, uh, more foot stuff. Mm-hmm. And he apologised. <gasps> so I assumed he was a nice guy, but it turns out he's pretending when actually... Polite is not the same thing as being a nice guy. Yeah, he English is not the same as being a nice Maybe guy. Maybe he voted right. against, like, uh, you know, disability benefit and then was like, I'm so sorry. And everyone's like, nice guy. He, nice yeah, guy. At least he regrets yeah. Yeah. yeah, interesting. But Phantom, you have to separate the art from the artist. Okay. Bad guy, but Phantom is fucking phenomenal. Okay. Phenomenal. Are we doing Phantom that? Phantom is or? incredible. Oh my yeah. god, Chloe Pets, I've just realised you've just put your things on the set and I didn't put them out of the way. And so the no one can see them. Absolute mess. It's fine. No it's one absolute chaos in the, here. It's behind Helen. That's chaos. Okay, fine. It's covered by Helen, but there's just a coat on a chair. 
Jesus. Sorry that I put We've my coat. We've absolutely lost the run of ourselves. You, Andrew, you should have said the place looks a state. Absolutely no one's going to notice that, Catherine. Oh, my God. Because I still think if we slag off him too much, there's no chance of you ever playing the Phantom. And I know that's such a thing that we all want to see. It's my uh, birthday party this weekend, and I've mm-hmm. got a karaoke planned. Mm-hmm. Um... And I'm going to sing Phantom, yeah. I'm not excited for it. I'm going to be there Do for you want to sing um, Christine's part? <sighs> yes, but you know I'm arriving late because I'm doing a gig. Yeah, we can hold it. I love so much that I'm your it. friend who you arrange brunch with because we both know I won't stay up late enough or want to sing at karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not going. Catherine texts me like, um, maybe, like, I've got a gig. Maybe I'll come after. And I was like, we're going for brunch. That's never fucking happening. Yeah, I'm never going. <laughs> <laughs> but you're definitely not going. Well, no, where is it? To North Town. To North Town. Maybe. Hmm. You're not going. I might. I'm de- I'm desperate to go because last time I went to a karaoke party there, I ended up topless within about 10 minutes of arriving. I don't think that's going to encourage me to go. I was out with a guy. I was on a date. I got drunk on the day. I arrived at the birthday. It was Olga's birthday party there. Yeah. And immediately walked in. I was like, put on bitch by Meredith Brooks. Me and Sophie Duke are topless, just like writhing around on the floor. It was actually oh, like, yeah, that's that actually sounds... kind of more exciting than I thought. It was, it was incredible. No, no, no. Like, that sounds bad, but it was actually really quite yeah. quite moving. Good. And I remember it was the first time I ever saw you in the um, two tone cardigan. I love that <laughs> cardigan. That, like it's so like the origin fit. story of the two tone cardigan. I love that cardigan. <laughs> looks so fit in that cardigan. She does. And then when you took it off, I was like, wow. You, you know, know, I met a new yeah. comic who has that cardigan. What? No, they need to. They can't have it. No, <laughs> no. Burn them or the cardigan? No, I couldn't see it perform. I literally was like on my way to the Bill Murray. I put she my head on my Camden head, and I was like, "Oh, who's here tonight? Oh, hi guys!" And um, and I was like, "Oh, I've got that cardigan." She went, "Yes," and I went, "No." <laughs> Who is it? Who is it? No. I don't oh, know I know her name. She seemed oh. really lovely. She is very, very lovely. She, yeah, she can't keep the cardigan though. Her name's Carla. Yeah, well, is that her name? She's really sweet. Wait, I'm sure she's very funny. Carla. Fucking enter. Why? She got your have it. No, I liked thing. it. I liked it. I feel no, but like I mean, it's it's from ASOS. I don't think I can ever. Yeah, but you've own been anything. wearing it for what four years? It's your cardigan. four years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like two years, and I've got two of them. So if anyone you sees me wearing them. it too much, it's because I bought it to do a show in. Yeah, and I have a tendency to spill when I'm nervous. Oh, I have a tendency mm. to sweat when I'm nervous, so I also have to buy two of things yeah just to like make sure that you've got options because yeah. otherwise you're sort of like yeah. really nervous and then you dribble and then it's like oh like helen's dribbled down herself again also you're both younger than me but the spilling like is one thing that i feel like a lot of people do but did you know that when you get into your 30s you just become a sweatier person is that true i i has to i be. think so i'm 30 now and i, I agree with that. sweat like a dog on heat all the time and it's vile. Do you think you're going through early menopause? Oh my God, no, don't. She's not. No, no, I do think I am. Really? Thank you for asking. Finally, that somebody feels sees like, me. It feels like something you would do. Like you're very Doesn't precocious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trying to make sure it's ahead of the Thank game. You. Yeah. And no. then everyone in their 40s will be like, I'm just starting to go through menopause and you'll be like, I did it at 33. Right? Oh my God, no, but it's so funny you should say that because I watched the Davina McCall documentary that everyone should watch on menopause mm. and I, I think it gave it to me. What do you mean? What, like like the ring? Like you watch it and then yes. suddenly you're afflicted by it? Yes. Okay, well, I don't want to watch it then. I think you should watch it though because I don't remember people You would be faces. great going through menopause. You're going to be you great. You would take it with such grace. What do you mean would be? It's going to happen to all of us. I think that's the thing is... I'm, we don't know. We don't know. We no, we know, do Helen, know. We do. No, no, because you can have a hysterectomy. Then you still have to go through the menopause. I don't think so. I think they take out... The menopause, they take out the menopause. <laughs> no, no, no. It's no. like a little orb no. that lives in the center of your no, soul. No, like, often it propels you to go straight through to, into the menopause. But it's like a mini pause, isn't it? It's not a meno. It's oh, a that's mini. fun. Um, I, I think that, it yeah. depends on the woman and often it is extreme. I think Okay, well, I want to get the menopause is taken that we out. need greater education around the menopause. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> um, and also HRT has had a really bad rep, guys, but a lot to be said for it. Anywho, something to watch. Do now. you want me to do a spin-off to the trusty hugs called the menopause Appreciation Society? Or the mini pause, mini so How was that? Oh. A class? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the menopause mini We should totally ah. do a menopause mini so Yeah. But we get to finally learn about it. We should have Davina on. <gasps> yeah. Do you think that's within your reach? Sorry, that I could find out. out. No, I don't know if no, it is. I, love, no, I don't no, think no, it right. is. I, let me find out. Yeah. Maybe like, maybe do like a few more episodes, you know, get a bit of momentum. And Are then you saying that this Davina. podcast hasn't taken off yet? I don't know. I don't think it has. We have 51 patrons. Tell me the stats. (laughs) (laughs) No, 51 patrons is good. How many listeners are are we averaging? I don't Uh, know. Two, two and a half thousand. 
two and a half thousand. Really good. But well if done. all of those two and a half thousand people told five of their friends, we could get this thing on the road, and then we could have a menopause. Up to a hundred thousand. I also, I also feel like Helen's quite a few man. of those were me replaying, trying to learn the intro. <laughs> 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 I would love it for fun we actually had five listeners and then just Chloe being like through the fog <laughs> you know I could just send you the music file yeah then you don't have to listen <laughs> no yeah, we want no. them we need those listens if you could also watch it on YouTube to learn the song that way that oh, yeah, and you have to yeah, like sure. on YouTube yeah like it's a what do, you, what do you do when the um, song is on on the YouTube are you just sat there on the YouTube of? I think it just has the slogan it has the, 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 the I do a oh, thumbs right, right. up I do a thumbs up. For the whole song, I do a thumbs that up. That feels out of character. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think I've ever seen... That's, you've never done a thumbs up in your bloody life. Look I'm just learning it. It, it looks so awkward look on you. <laughs> look at that. Is you, that it? Am I doing it? Look, look at am you I trying to be breezy. It? Is that it? Oh, am God, I, no. That's unsettling. Put it guy? down. Put it Easy, down. breezy, like beautiful. brunch, Chloe. <laughs> that. Hey, where are we going to brunch then? Oh, huh? Do you want to come brunch? What? No, I'm coming karaoke. Yeah, yeah. but you can come brunch too. What, when's what? brunch? Like, where do you want to go? Like, I figured we'd just go to the diner like we always do. Yeah, fine. We can go diner. We don't have to go diner. We could go to somewhere nice on Warren Street. We could go to that um, lemon place or the Milk and Co. Whatever it's called, Milk and Honey, Milk and Co. I don't know. Let's go there. They've okay. got um, wasabi and white chocolate babka, oh, and it's yeah, amazing. It's yeah. Yeah. Well, they have something um, sort of quite classic. I like, well, you know, when I'm going out on a brunch, I like uh, a real savoury option. And yeah, then a sweet they'll have both. Option. They'll have okay, both. Great, yeah, let's great. do that. Like we'll send you the address, Ellen. burrito, like a breakfast burrito. <gasps> That's what we had when we went for... Um, that was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where breakfast that? with that Rosie. That was brunch yeah. for Rosie's birthday. Uh, I wasn't invited. Thingy, thingy. You no. were, you were... Oh, well, don't I? even fucking try this. <laughs> I'm always invited and I never this. go. Helen, Helen, <laughs> it's a Helen wonder I have friends. Thing. Don't it's even fucking try friends. this with me. <laughs> it's a wonder I have friends. Thank you for still continuing to invite me, even though I pretty much always choose tidying. And <laughs> it, it, it's, quite, it's quite difficult listening to this podcast where you talk about like culling your friends and then <gasps> I know, and then I, have, I like, know. A, and then I have like a long list of like, sorry, I can't make that. And I'm no, like, I'm oh, fuck. Am I, I feel the same thing. Is she trying to face me? It's so weird, isn't it? Absolutely not. I invite you to things. I, I had that spontaneous true, yeah. show with you yeah, one yeah, time. Yeah. Um, you or, just have a very formal WhatsApp tone. Yeah, you've said this several times. Can you just I, like whack a gif in? You know, <laughs> pop an emoji. But also like, hey, what's up? Yeah, what's up? Yeah, we like Yeah, we like a yeah, we like a, yeah, we like a said to me at the end of such a lot, we had this most joyful oh my hang. God. And then we were at the train station. I timed station. it so badly. So you did. And, and Helen, I need to tell you this about Chloe. I have a formal... Um, WhatsApp tone and Facebook tone, but Chloe's weakest friendship trait is that she occasionally gives you like a report card. Oh, that's not fair! But at the end, no, wait, of, the, at the end of the hang, so an example of this was, and I love it by the way because I often come out well as a student. But yeah. um, that day we got to the train station at the end of a joyful hang, and just as we were about to go for our train, oh, Chloe God, went. What did I say? I was really shut. No. Oh, um, by the way, I'm really glad we did this because sometimes I'm not really sure. If we are friends, because um, no, you're, but this was the tone, because uh, your your engagement on Facebook is like really formal and it's very, I guess it comes kind of off kind of a steer and I'm not sure if you want to hang out. Anyway, bye. And I was left with a chain like, <gasps> I could have had a me. lovely time. I thought we were, I didn't even know what I was What going. is wrong with the pair of you? I was you? going back through my messages and I was like, none of them were like, to whom it may concern. They were all like, dear Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> What's the problem? There's not all of your messages with yo yo yo. I think the the problem with Chloe and I as friends is that we are both, and I I hope I'm not speaking on just my behalf. Yeah. So into it as friends. Like, I'm very into our friendship. That's so nice. But I think that we both get a bit like, and you? I think and you wait so you're definitely trying to prove friendship to each other and you're panicking doing it no we just want to be as good a friend to the other person as they deserve and I I also think it's like yeah yeah no and that makes real sense but it's nice to hear that because yeah I think we're both too into it sometimes I feel like um, you you know when like you Helen you do this quite a lot I'm just chill friends with both of you I'm pretty relaxed do you you never think about us when we're not here I do but like I'll just send a message being like what's up like and then that's it or just FaceTime you know when like you're nice to someone and then it makes you feel vulnerable, so you act out. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, that. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. I did actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just love that you said that at the end of a hang. Like, just so you know, like this uh, went well because I was worried. No, 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 I wasn't worried. I wasn't worried. I was, we had so much day wine. We had like, loads we of had day wine. We had a lot of day wine, and you came hungover, so you were already vulnerable. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, but it was. It, I, I'm glad. I'm glad I said it. I just um, I timed it badly because then we didn't have time for discussion. I feel <laughs> like I maybe a couple of burden. casual phone calls between the two of you over the next month would be a great thing. Yeah, we don't really have a casual friendship though. We sort of like ring each other with our most existential. Maybe crises. that's our problem. Then. Maybe, Maybe we, we need to convert it into a more day-to-day friendship because yeah. I think I have think you considered going like build a bear together. That sounds terrible. But you go to bookshops together. That's nice. That's what yeah, we do. That's that our is hang. nice. Yeah. yeah, I think maybe that's it because like may, maybe or uh, sometimes I just feel like I'm only coming with burden. Oh, I never feel that way. I okay. feel very trusted by you. Okay, great, great. Yeah, and Helen, actually, you're lovely too. Oh my god, and so nice. I love that you call me up when uh, you're on the phone to your sister and you can't be bothered to speak to her anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, I never worry about whether or not you're trying to call me because I truly feel like the day you decide you don't want to be friends with me I will never see you again <laughs> <laughs> and it's just not a worry because I'll be like she'll be gone she'll I be just so don't gone. think I thought about um, friendship that much I think <laughs> like, you might be more stable than either of us which is yeah it could be that and I think it's part of that thing that you've I like hanging about. out with both of you yeah, but it's, like it's the part of the thing where you've spoken about where uh, you didn't realise you were bullied at school. Like, you wouldn't know if someone wasn't enjoying your friendship because you're just sort of... Maybe I would just incredibly. assume we're all having a nice time. Yeah, there's just sort of, like, lift music going on in your head. You know what? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Helen can come to brunch. I think it might make us have a casual hang. Shall we? When is brunch? Uh, it's, like, 11 o'clock this Saturday-ish. Yeah. Yeah. This Saturday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 My birthday, remember? You want to do it? I know, but it's karaoke in the evening. Yeah, yeah. so go on. Oh my God, France is called. Do something or other. Come on, do you want to call? Calling her back. Okay, but then we have to deal with the problem. That okay, then we'll deal with the problems. Song. This is like the know. ultimate adult female friendship it um, really podcast. Is. It really is. Just, Francis, I'm doing um, Trusty Hogs now with <laughs> Catherine. <laughs> Hi, and Francis. I said about how you said that I get bullied on it. Is that true? Oh, sil- <laughs> silence from Francis. <laughs> Tell us. Well, what? You think that I get bullied on it, though, don't you? Shaming. Yeah, I get shamed. There we go. That's Just a different thing to bullying. That's a different thing. And, and do you think that that is um, whose fault? Do you think that is? No, don't say it. No. no. Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah, whisper? she said Catherine. <laughs> and and what? And you don't think that Helen shames back? Helen, you can't tell her what to say. No. <laughs> <laughs> we, I just um, think we're talking about like adult female friendships because Chloe and Catherine struggle with theirs. That's not true. No, we love it. Along. We, oh my God, I love Chloe so much. If anything, I just feel too uncool for them. No. That's, what? The, constant, that's the constant anxiety that I don't really know why you're hanging out with me when you have cooler friends. Oh, Francis. Hey, do you want to go to the art gallery together on Thursday? Can you come? 10, 20 Sorry, you can't just sort out your admin <laughs> right now. Can we just check? Can I ask one more question of Francis who thinks that I'm a bully? Francis, do you listen to the podcast? You clearly... I to it. Yeah. Yeah, I listen to all of it. I'm up, I'm up today. Do you think it's a good time? It's a really good time. Well, then well, what's the problem, Francis? Francis, can you do a three-word review of me? <laughs> yeah. Because mine is bullying, shaming, and... Irish. All <laughs> cut up. Just um, sum up Chloe as a person. Very good at drawing. Thank you. Can, can, <laughs> I, can I have a review? Fit. <laughs> uh, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> I like her. I like her. I've changed my mind on Francis. I like her. Francis, I love you. I'll call you in a bit. I love, you. I love you. Bye. <laughs> What a turnaround. I hated Francis at the start of the call and Why now I love her. Fit? Here's the thing with adult female friendship. I'm so tall. They're complicated. They're complicated. They're tricky. You know, we all go through a lot of different phases with them. But at the end of the day, we're all great friends. And I am so lucky to have both of you in my life. Thanks. Thanks, Helen. <laughs> Thank you. Well, and we are Helen. lucky to have me in our lives. And we are lucky yeah. to have me and in our together, you in our lives. Even life. though sometimes we worry that we've upset someone or that they're trying to pull away or that our relationship might be too intense or too chill, it doesn't matter because we love each other. We love each other. And it other. all comes down to just having a nice time together because that's what life's about. Spending time with people you love and leaving it a better place. Because in a world where you can be anything... 
be kind. <laughs> Through the fog <laughs> come the trusty hogs. <laughs> this got so weird so fast. Oh, I'm real glad you're here and that we had this deep and meaningful chat and that Helen um, is also going to continue to be also our friend. Also, just for context, um, um, you can go see Frances's artwork up at the RA. Oh my God, uh, what? Until the end of Stop January. It. She's at the uh, Royal Academy. She's a wonderful artist. Can we go? Artist. I'm, I'm going on Thursday. We could go on Saturday. We could go after brunch. After brunch. You guys should go. It's incredible. No, you're not going to go. And her painting is already <laughs> sold. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? That's turned into us. Like, begging her to begging come to brunch. Begging for Helen's want... friendship. <laughs> It should be the other way around. What's, what's the I'm a great brunch guest. Francis what? Francis Stanfield. Okay, great. Stan- Francis Petrovska Stanfield. I would personally not say that you should go, except that she does think I'm fit, so probably you should go. We did a go. really fun um, thing where she hosted like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I really want to do you another one. Do I want to do another yeah, yeah, one. Yeah. It was so fun. She 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 hosted like comedians doing drawing. This she runs London listener. Drawing yeah. Group with uh, two other amazing women. Oh, and she's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. She just like made us do some drawing and stuff and it was so fun. Awesome. And very freeing, you know, to do something I'd creative. Love to do that. Um, I'd love to pose for um, uh, being painted or drawn, but... Uh, Maybe that's what our friendship needs. You get naked, I'll draw you. <laughs> <laughs> that's how me and Francis became really close. I used to go to our uncle's house and get naked for her. And she I don't think that me. would help our friendship. I'm sorry, what did you say, uncle? <laughs> <laughs> she was living at her aunt and uncle's and I would go over. We work in a cafe together. Then after shift, I'd go over and get naked and she'd draw me. And where was her uncle at this time? Uh, the downstairs, probably. Okay, I thought... Yeah. And where were you? Upstairs. Okay, oh. good. <laughs> 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 Okay, Andrew, we have somebody's... Well, by the way, you can email in all of your problems. We will help you solve them. Some people will feel like, what kind of problems, guys? To that we say, all kinds. We can help you with your love lives. We can help you get a mortgage. We can help you Ooh. with a divorce. We can help you with I your I cannot help you get a mortgage. <laughs> I love being I, Let I've, me try. Can I just give a disclaimer? If you're coming to this podcast with mortgage advice <laughs> or divorce help, then don't take it as your only source of um, wow. support. Thanks, I'd Chloe. say wait and hear the advice. Yeah, you... wow. I think for liability reasons, that is actually a very sensible oh, uh, disclaimer. Boy. Thank you, Chloe. Okay, <laughs> but you can come to us with anything from as small as my housemates being a prick all the way up to I want to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just an official disclaimer, we are not financial or health advisors. No, uh, and Andrew, <laughs> Andrew, can you please tell us where they can email? Uh, yes, you can email at uh, trustyhogs at gmail.com. Yes, nice. Okay, yes. tell us this week's problem because Chloe's going to help us solve it. Go for it, Andrew. Oh, well, it's funny that um, Helen mentioned housemates being a prick. This is from S and it's a very simple Hi, problem. Uh, and they say, uh, how do you deal with housemates you don't like? Honestly, Ooh. I am fucking psychic. I, I, when I get my period, I can tell things different. Carry on. Uh, that was it. This, how do you how do you That's deal? It. Oh, that's okay. no context. You don't like, yeah. So there's, this person's clever. Like they don't want to give to... context because then we might they, their house might might be able to guess. That's I thing. will say. I I mean I noticed this. It was from an anonymous email, but S is Sunil's initial. That I did notice that. Oh, it's also <gasps> Sam's because you live in the oh, Sam. Oh God, I do live in Sam. Yeah, let's listen. not try and stir up any drama it between be the Neil, Sam, Andrew, myself. So Neil's living a lovely life in his palace of dreams. Mm. Uh, right this thing when there's no context to it so obviously there's a million different things is there a (laughs) lease where this person you're living with you're stuck with them for a year so you have to find a way to deal with it or is it something you should get out of because i think if you are unhappy at home and someone's making it very hard to be there sometimes it's better to cut your losses and move on with your life because it's a hard environment but we live in london lots of people rent in this economy and i think we know that most often you're learning to deal with people because you have no other choice so let's say that they're stuck in a lease with this person for another year yeah they've got to find a way to deal with them yeah and hey it could be a good opportunity to learn some conflict resolution skills yes love love that chloe let's see this as an opportunity yeah great okay i I often think it's great to have some practice with navigating difficult people because it helps you keep that sort of muscle working is that why we're still friends (laughs) oh my god Uh, because you hold me at a distance i can sort of (laughs) microdose it Oh um, my god! You are doing some eye contact and hugging when we finish recording this Fine. episode. I will we'll do a trust fall. I Let's want to really about... quickly say I think I should role play a bad housemate, and you would deal with the situation. Love that. Okay. How about that? All right. Okay. Yeah, let's try it. Let's try it. 
Hey guys, it's 2 a.m. in the morning on a Wednesday and you've got work in the morning, but I've brought some mates back and we're fucking having a party, including doing the Casper Slide. Hi, Helen, flatmate here. Hey. Um, I've got a real problem with you. Okay. You always narrate exposition. <laughs> <laughs> You're too heavy on show, don't tell, and I really don't like it about you. Get out of my flat. Oh, but I live here and I pay rent. I have a right to do what I want here as well as you. Okay. Um, I would set up a group chat so that everybody's involved because let's face it, everybody else is probably also having their sleep interrupted. What I would do in the short term is put in my ear earbuds, go to sleep. That is not the time to address the issue because it, you're going to be a buzzkill. Mm-hmm. At the very least, I might maybe send a, most I would send a message saying, hey, I appreciate you have people over. I'd really appreciate it if you could keep it down because I have work in the morning. But then I would the next morning set up a group so I had everybody on my side. Mm-hmm. And then I would say something like, hey, guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry for the message. <laughs> I've left food in the communal space because I already feel awkward about bringing anything up. I hate conflict. Anywho, just a short note Fucking from me. This is psychotic. Just a short note from me. Um, we all live here as adults and we all have lives to lead, and I think we need to be considerate of one another. So I would love if in future we had the opportunity and space to feel like we could ask if we can have people over if it suits people but if it's during the week maybe not after midnight that seems considerate and fair I will reciprocate with the same levels of respect <laughs> sorry for bringing anything up I guess I'll clean the house because I feel weird about this bye so do you understand why I found it difficult to garner Catherine's tone from her what yeah that really was? hard yeah. yours faithfully <laughs> cohabitant <laughs> Catherine Bow. <laughs> I think I, I think that is the right way of dealing with it Maybe don't put in all the apologies, but I think you should just say... I think just say what it is that you want. Just go, look, this, these are the behaviours that you're doing. Mm-hmm. They're making me feel this way. I understand that we probably have different like ways of living and standards totally. of living, and that's so okay. Mm-hmm. But... Is there a halfway house? Like, yeah, is there a way that we can... Just think, like, if you're super generous with your housemates, odds are they will then pick up on that generosity and start doing like generous acts but also like generous things as far as like cleaning goes like, I've if never you're cleaning then true. they will clean I've never found that to be no? true no no I've never found that to be true I've never had a reciprocity with housemates in relation to like generosity of emotional or um like domestic labor and I mm. actually think that it is better to spell it out so for example yep. I spent years cleaning and everyone just went ha huh, Catherine loves to clean and it's like no 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 no, no. I don't but I feel I like, like to it. live somewhere that's clean yeah. yeah and so when I spoke to my housemates and sat down and said can we have a house meeting I'm doing all of these things they're going either unnoticed or unappreciated or unfairly um, split between us mm-hmm would you A, either like to get a cleaner and we can all spend seven quid a week or mm-hmm. would you B, like to make a rota? None of them wanted to spend the money but we made the rota and suddenly I didn't feel resentful of them mm. all the time. And everyone else understood that those things were valuable to have done. They just didn't realise they were being done or didn't or thought that I just loved to clean. And so I think spelling it out You're right, it's is having right. that sit down and it's like not doing it in the moment. Like we've all heard of those awful things where like a yeah. friend has an argument with a housemate at like three in the morning because like something's like not done or something is being done and it just annoys them. It's like yeah. take a minute, like... It always helps to sleep on something. Don't let resentment build up. Just sit down, have yeah. that meeting and just mm. sort of be like, hey, this is how I like to live. Obviously, we're not all going to be complete line with everything, but like, let's figure out the best way to do this. I yeah. think like passive aggression or like... It's really important. What, it's really yeah. important. <laughs> it's vital. Sometimes active aggression as well. Um, yeah. <clears throat> you could mm-hmm. have sort of a, yeah. you know, a fight in the living room or something. I don't know. But no, I think we often think that like passive aggression is... I don't know why we think it's the way to go because it feels so counterproductive to to doing anything good. But um, yeah, spelling out what you want clearly is really good. Maybe practice it with a friend or a partner before you yeah. say it to them. So, and then all, if like the person who you say it to then receives it badly, that's mm-hmm. not your problem. And don't get drawn into like a petty argument. Yeah. Just assertively, just know what your like three main points are. Yeah. And if they want to argue back, just repeat the three main points. Be assertive and boundaried. I also think I absolutely agree. I would also say as a person who I think a lot of people would think I'm a difficult housemate because I have incredibly high standards of hygiene and I like things the way I like them and I tend to impose them on the houses that I live in. I think to everyone's betterment, but they might not feel that way. Right. (laughs) Um, I think a really valuable thing for someone like me who's a control freak is it's useful occasionally to really try to step back and have some empathy. I agree. And and for me, it, it was always useful to go for a walk and to try to think about 
first of all, so many of the people I've hated living with, I absolutely adore when I don't live with, right? So trying to remind myself what I love about the person. No, no. And then also no. think about, <laughs> no. and also think about why they might be behaving the way they're behaving. For example, if somebody isn't pulling their weight, it might be that they're down. It might be that they're incredibly busy with work. That doesn't mean that you aren't both of those things and that they shouldn't have to pull their weight. But I think having a little bit of appreciation for why people behave they do, the way they do, especially in their most vulnerable exposed space, which is their home, is a useful way for you to go in without feeling too defensive and rather to feel constructive. You both have your hands up. I am going to go with Helen because she put her hand she up first. Up first yeah. Off you go, Helen. Um, Just to put that in perspective of having empathy and understanding. So let's say if you had a housemate who um, you were trying to like be reasonable with them so you give them two of the bills and you take two of the bills <laughs> and they haven't acted on that bill so yes. you receive two court summons in your name it's outrageous how would you have dealt with that situation I would at this point say hello Sunil <laughs> has he done that yeah I understand that what we're what a snake I understand that you're busy we're going court we're going court no we're not going court so no, they'd have to pay, pay a fee though <laughs> they'd have to pay a fine I understand that you're Sunil busy and I I understand that you're, yeah, he better pay the fine. You better not be paying the fine. I split fine with now. That's <gasps> outrageously unfair. Is it? Get, he's the one get him on the phone. He's the cause of the oh, fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just got what some. I would say is that you should say, I know we've had a laugh about this. I know you're very busy. I understand being busy, but it does need to be treated as top priority that we get the gas. And you're nearly fucking day. 40, mate. Sort yourself and, out. And, and I wouldn't say that because I don't think that it's useful or constructive. Cut that yeah. out of the podcast. Okay. No, keep so, it in. He needs to sort his life out. Go okay. on. So then he started building a Lego Seinfeld set on puzzle table. And then I was like, I want to puzzle. Mm -hmm. Is it your so, puzzle table? It's, yeah. Then there's no question. It's your puzzle table. Yeah, but he owns TV. And it's his couch. So if we were doing it that way, then I would have puzzle table and floor. Um, <laughs> you know, there's, there's you putting empathy into practice. Well done. So then I want him to finish Lego Seinfeld so I can full puzzle. Ask him to. And I moved it to the side as a Ooh. hint. And then he went, where's my Lego Seinfeld? And I went there and he still hasn't touched it. And it's just sitting on the okay, side. Okay, so you've done passive So I'm going to wait another week and then I'm going to throw water on it and burn I, it. I see then that's not really saying what you want very clearly. So why don't you just say, I'd love to puzzle. Can you please let me know when you're going to be finished with the Lego? How about, um, you know, come on a podcast, air your grievances and then hope they hear the episode. Also a very valid option. You had your hand up, Chloe Pets. Oh, I've forgotten the point, obviously. I can't remember. Okay. I, I, um, I, no, I we won't have a go empathy. anyway. We we're talking about empathy. <gasps> oh housemate. yeah, yeah, as well. Because like, um, it sounds like, it, as a general rule, like more a higher percentage of the population don't share the values that you do. Yeah. So it's one of those things where you're just kind oh, of like. Look. <laughs> 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 no Helen clean <coughs> clean so like it's one of those things where I think I personally think you're There's a lot of Catholics Andrew. you're the right in the right <laughs> thank you but it's one of those things where if if other people don't have those standards then yeah. can we judge them because it, it's not like they're the anomaly no they're not um so yeah it is kind of working towards that middle ground where like you get get what you want and they start pulling their weight more but yeah, yeah. people just don't do it they haven't learned how to do it no What's and also that? that's just not maybe the way they they want to live yeah like my t need for tidiness hinders me a lot of the time they want to live in filth and squalor yeah they are comfortable just popping their jacket on any fucking no come on no 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 <laughs> it is well hung over the jacket it's very tidy <laughs> there's a distinction between mess and dirtiness and, and i'm really not being dirty today and also i'm a guest in your podcast studio <laughs> and i wasn't offered a hook to hang a thing on <gasps> I so i had to make right do for myself it's up here that's yeah. our bad it's our bad sorry, i did blame myself i said i should have asked you i'm sorry no, mine's that's fine on the floor here and I'm tidy. Harrowing. So yeah, so you're clean and Helen's tidy and I like both. What can I tell you? Yeah. Have we helped this person with their situation? <laughs> it's just, it's it's too vague to know exactly what to say. Because part of me also thinks like, you know, if they're a real asshole, then, you know, fake your own death, get out of the lease and start fresh. Perfect. Yeah. You know, fair, there's fair. a lot of different options here. Yeah, fair. Sometimes I also do the thing where um, if... Oh, that this sounds like manipulation. Now I think about it. What part of anything I said I wasn't manipulative? Love manipulation. <laughs> yeah, it's, we love it. Go it's for where it. Where you go to someone, like you say a thing that you want to happen as though they're already doing it as a piece of praise. 
gorgeous. So you go like I know that. this move, yeah. We you do that like... with audiences. We do that when when an audience are actually being quite ready. Sometimes as an as a host, it's quite useful to say, "You've been such an amazing audience. You've been so supportive <laughs> of all the acts." And they all go, "We are amazing. We are supportive." And then they behave that way because yeah. people are yeah, it's, love, it's children. It's the children mentality. Yeah. So like you know, I I might say to a flatmate, "I love it that." Um, you know, you give me quiet time in my own space rather than yeah. being in my That's fucking good. face or the fucking time. Yes. And then they'll, they'll be like, oh, yeah, cool. And then they'll just be silent when they're next to me. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it's really I love good. that. Yeah. I'm just trying to think of examples because like, we lived together for one month. But oh, I feel yeah. like we were quite I good. Think, I think one month isn't like long, long enough, enough to, it's yeah. to get into it. Yeah, and we were like allies against the boys who were like frankly disgusting. Yeah, because one of the boys. Yeah. Oh ate. my god, it was. <laughs> I don't I, think I want to watch. I want to hear this. It's was funny. <laughs> No, I honestly, I, I, I was naked in my room in bed about like three in the morning or something. <laughs> nice. One of the boys we were living with had been like, fuck, he was so pissed after our show. We were all living together. We were all doing a show together. Right. He came into my room and he was quite like absolutely wasted. And he'd been room. eating just um, sleepwalking, he came into your room. sleepwalking, oh, sleepwalking. Okay. And he'd been eating just beige food, just garlic bread and chips like all month and drinking he, beer. He was like, he was like 24 or something, but he, he, it was like a 12 year old had been given yeah, like yeah, a month yeah. away okay. yeah. do you know what I mean okay. and he just came do into my room want. he must have just thought it was his room and his girlfriend he was drunk sleepwalking <laughs> disorientated oh and I was like get out oh my god what are you doing get out this isn't your room I was like I don't want to wake him but I'm also naked get <laughs> out like get out I'm and so he was like to you no, I'm punch. sleeping I'm sleeping no and then he rolled over went in my room and I went no it's over there and he went <laughs> And what? crop dusted my room, <laughs> and I what? have never smelled anything what? like it. It was fucking. What? I think about it, and my eyes sting. <laughs> like my eyeballs sting. I felt the oh, air change in the room. <laughs> the colour changed. Everything was blurry. I had a new climate. I had to get to a window. Oh it was my god! Insane. Who was this? Insane. You can figure it out. Pleasant Reserve, two thousand and seventeen. Yeah. Was that before or after me? After. after. Uh, who was the... <coughs> let's not, no, let's not say. It's embarrassing for them. And also they were just sleepwalking oh, and farts are involuntary. We basically told people they can go find out who it no, is. No, but the reason it was funny is because like it was, was so it? in character of... Jack Gledow. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, it's the most like in character thing Jack Gledow's ever done. Like, Slap walked in, <laughs> crop busted, and then left. And I was like, <gasps> <gasps> he's such a tiny boy. How can he make so Don't, much mess? You have no this smell. Oh my god. Oh come on, look. You can look at him and be like, have you ever like washed your hair? Mm. Then a smell is around you. So you're like, I've got to wash it again. Yeah. I feel like it's, <laughs> in there. it's fucking trapped. Oh, like, that's made me feel ill. I it hate was it. Fucking insane. So the, and even then, I'd say that's... I dealt with that housemate situation as being the next day. You fucking slept walked into my room when I was naked and farted. And then there's nothing really to do because you can't control these things. So that was me being empathetic, being like, my empathy says that obviously... Like, I it. will tell everyone about this on a podcast and I will introduce you onto stage with that story of course. for the next six nights. Uh -huh. But I understand <laughs> that you weren't conscious. And that's nice. how I um, emoted. That's beautiful. It that's was beautiful. so funny. Hey, so S, that hasn't happened to you, right? That's got to be something. Mm -hmm. I also once had a housemate that went in my room and put on my swimming costume. This guy I was living with in Germany. Excuse me, what? And... Um, I just saw his Facebook profile picture change and it was like him in my swimming costume like this. And I was like, is that my fucking room in swimming costume? He was like, yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Like, Why did you do that? What the hell? so fucking weird. He also, I had just started doing stand-up and I, um, they were like, oh, you need pictures of yourself for the gigs. And I was like, okay, great. So I went to a photo, like, booth mm. and oh, I was like oh two it. euros and I'll just get po photos there and well I'll like take passport photos <laughs> yeah but it's the Berlin photo automat so they're like they're black and white and you do like four punches and I, I didn't okay. have any money so like yeah, two no, euros like, I makes love sense. That. 
And I just like took a close up photo on my phone. And I was like, there's my headshot. I'm not realizing how stupid that was. No, it's so sweet. So that was the, the photo. And um, he saw them on my desk, went in, took a photo and uploaded that as his picture. So I was like, you're fucking mental. What? Like actually mental. He also couldn't go to any of the supermarkets around us because he got banned from all of them for shoplifting. So I had to go and do his own shopping. Phone. We on. love him. I don't, I'm not in contact with him anymore. Yeah, that seems reasonable. It was Yannick. We don't have to do yes, full no name. Full no, name. No, 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 no full name. name. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to full name in. Yannick. Uh, then just Yannick. The, the last thing I will say is um, with living, and this really helped me because, again, I really wasn't made to live with other people, um, is to try to remember as best you can that wherever you're living in terms of housemates and renting is hopefully short term. It's not going to last forever. So Neil's leaving. It's a temporary solution. What? Jack Gledow's moving in. Uh, <laughs> and that hopefully it will open. pass. Every room is an extractor fan. <laughs> um, that's just a thought. I, I and you know, that that's a good thing to remember in life that, you know, no, nothing will last forever. And remember, there's puzzlers, there's Lego builders, but at the end of the day, you're sharing the table. Amen. 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 No. All things bright. <laughs> no, okay. You and know what came up on my shuffle on Spotify the other day? You know, God said to Noah, he's gonna build an arky arky. Because I was listening to like the hell are you talking about? primary school hymns on my phone. <laughs> and a that was something. That, um, that fulfills my theory that like I've got this new thing about pen, it's like a new genre of comedian that. I've come up called the pencil case comedian. The pencil case comedian. And I think it's, you're one of them. Harriet Kemsey's one of them, where it's like, you're like... Feels like a slur. Yeah. I, I own a pencil case. What's the question? You're not a pencil case comedian, though. It's it's less about whether you own a pencil case and more like it's a state of mind, where I feel like you're in suspended anim animation where you're still about like 14 or 15 years old and you haven't sort of moved on from it. So your attitude towards stand-up comedy is like, it is to like schoolwork and homework. So you've got like a like a diary and then you you've got a pencil case with highlighters in and that's how you write stand-up comedy and it's yeah. a, very, a very i think it's a really nice thing like i wish i was they sound organized like a studious stand-up comedian who like that is me yeah, I yeah. Know, i've good. got stickers and notepads yeah i think it's great you thought it was gonna be i want to be one great. that wasn't but you're not because <clears throat> you're not childish um so you're a pencil case comedian and you're like a you're like a pencil case comedian that grew up like a laptop comic. Yeah, laptop comic. Okay. Yeah, I love that. <gasps> That's right, because you do type out I your do. shows. Mm -hmm. I do. Whereas mine are in like notepads that are like glittery and like bullet pointed in. Yeah, laptop comedian, pencil case comedian. It'll just be like wow. bullet point, dad wank, you know? I feel like you're like a, It's and this is different, a notebook comedian, like just a black notebook with yeah. black pen. Yeah, yeah. And then and then I, it seems like I've been writing all day and then when I turn it around, it's just empty. Yes, exactly that. Love it. And then I get on stage and say... I've written any of his shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Um, Chloe Pet, thanks for doing our podcast. Thank you for our thanks for having me. You're um, so helpful. You're welcome. Yay! Through the fog. No. <laughs> no, do a pig noise. No, no, no. <laughs> I was always going to do a pig. You noise. were. Goodness it's sake! It's one of them ones where, like, mostly I'm on your side. But when Helen does a pig noise in the pocket, I do love it. It's funny, yeah. And I was quite good at it there. I, I think it's mad also. We will discuss this at a later uh, point, how everyone is on Catherine's side. Like, we're not on the same side. Yeah. yeah. We, we are together yeah. are in this. Mm. I feel bonded with you. Don't give me Francis back on the phone to oh, tell yeah, you that fair, you bully me. Fair. Okay? Um, Chloe Betts, it was a pleasure spending time with you. Until the next time, good day. Good day. Hold hands, please. You're not holding hands. I have clammy hands. Doesn't matter. I feel like it does matter. I feel like what the subtext is is that I have had a cold and Catherine doesn't want to hold. Also, that. oh fuck! Why do I keep forgetting? <laughs>